Hello and welcome to day 42 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your artist in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the study I've done today is by George Ness, and it is called Sunrise. Um, this is a piece I ended up adding uh, a little later on to the series uh, due to uh, uh, some some duplicate imagery that I had uh, come up with when when making my plan. It was sort of difficult to keep uh, from accidentally uh, duplicating images and so this is one I, I came in later and uh, and found and it's a it's a pretty neat painting I think you'll notice in the, uh, the study that I spent quite a lot of time in the sky um, there's a certain sort of hazy kind of fleckish quality to it that uh, I really uh, enjoyed and um, uh, hopefully you will enjoy seeing me do my best to execute it I'm going to get into some biographical information about George Ness now, and uh, this is from the book by George Ness, I mean by no Nikolai Chiskowski, called George Ness. It's a very good book. Uh, I highly recommend anyone interested in Ness gets it, checks it out. It's uh, it's one of the best overviews, general overviews of his work, his life, and his career. Uh, I'm just going to jump into a section here. Um, it's on page, uh, well, page 11 it looks like, or page 10. Um, and this is first teacher was John Jesse Barker, active from 1850 to 1856, an itinerant painter living at the time in Newark, New Jersey. Barker was an indifferent artist, and Ines, who studied with him for only a month or so, could have learned very little. But when Barker arrived in Elizabethtown, New Jersey in 1820, he advertised his skills by saying he had enjoyed the instructions of Mr. Thomas Sully one of the most successful painters of likenesses present day. Barker's paintings show little of Sully's exceptional facility, but it is possible that he passed on to his pupil something of Sully's fluency of style and exposed him, if only as a taste and not yet a skill, to rich efforts of brush, rich effects of brushwork and paint that never deserted him. After his study with Barker, Ines worked off and on for two years as an apprentice engraver in the firm of Sherman and Smith in New York. He later described it dismissively as a little tinkering in an engraver's office, but it was longer than he spent on other stages of his artistic education. Not surprisingly, considering his nervous, impetuous temperament and already formed predilection for color and painterly richness, the painstaking work of engraving seems to have little effect upon him. Many years later, in 1879, while trying with difficulty to make an etching, he described pecking with an engraver, pecking with a graver as such long-winded, tiresome work. The most influential experience of Inessa's fragmentary artistic education was his month of study with Regis Francois Guignot, probably in 1843 when Ines registered that year in the live class of the National Academy of Design in New York. He lists himself as a pupil of Guignot. The well-trained Guignot, 1816 to 1882, surely taught him more of the craft of painting than Barker had. There is, however, little visible influence of Guignot's rather delicately painted genre scenes and landscapes on Ines's art. But perhaps it was not what Guignot taught him but what he represented that mattered most. He was a pupil of Paul Delacroix. Delacroix, in turn, was trained as a landscape painter, particularly influenced by the Dutch 17th century art, and later a pupil of Baron Antoine Jean Gros, who was a pupil of Jacques Louis David. I think we're gonna need to stop there, um, because we're getting close to the end. But. Uh, so several places you'll see online that says Ines had no artistic training. That's not actually accurate. He did have some artistic training, and he was, um, to a large degree, self-taught. But he did have some instruction, and sometimes a little bit goes a long way. So, uh, just I uh, thought I'd share that with you guys. Uh, seeing we are getting close to the end here. Thanks for joining me for day 42. And we'll see you tomorrow for day 43. If you'd like to see more of my work, go to landscapepainter.co.nz. And meanwhile, stay out of trouble and take good care.